Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to start somewhat of a series on my channel by sharing with you guys how to save or store some of your fresh veggies in your fridge or your freezer. Now today I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys how I prep my bacon or my eggplant to go in the freezer. Um, a lot of you guys have always asked in my fried bacon or eggplant curry videos how I prepare the eggplant as well by either peeling it or washing it and I'll show you guys how to do that step by step today. So in our household, whenever we use eggplant, we're usually making eggplant curry or baigan curry or fry eggplant or fry baigan. Now what I like to do whenever making any of these dishes is peel at least half of the eggplants that you're using in the recipe. So if you're using one eggplant, you'd want to peel half of it. If you're using two eggplants, peel one of them. You could peel all of it or you could even leave all of the skin on. My recommendation and reason for peeling it is usually because the skin holds a little bit of a bitterness to it. And sometimes depending on the maturity of the eggplant or the type of eggplant, sometimes they're a little more bitter than the others. So I always like to just follow my little rule and peel at least half of it whenever making these dishes. And once you've peeled your eggplant or your baigan as much as you want to, you're gonna go ahead and cut it into very large slices to this way it can make it easier for you to cut them into smaller little slices. Now, I like to slice my eggplant whenever making it for curries or fried eggplant or fried bacon, but I know a lot of people will actually cut them into little cubes. It just depends on your family and the way that your family usually makes these dishes. This is the way that I always saw my grandmother do it, so this is why I'm doing it like this. Now, if you were a pro like my grandmother, you'd probably cut it right in between your fingers like she does, but I just like to use the help of my board and my knife. And while you're slicing up all of your eggplant, once you have a set cut, you wanna go ahead and put it into your bowl that you filled up with some water. The reason why you wanna keep them in water is because what happens as you let the bacon sit, it actually oxidizes and gets brown. Now, to be honest, it doesn't really do anything bad to the eggplant. It just makes it look a little darker after it's done cooking. Now, I just wanted to show you guys what the slices of eggplant look like after I finish cutting them up. Now, your slices might be a little longer than this. However, you cut them, you just wanna make sure that they're nice and thin. So this way, when the eggplant cooks, either when you're making fried bacon or if you're doing the eggplant curry, you wanna make sure that it melts away properly. And as you guys can see, these eggplants, these American eggplants you usually find at the grocery store, they contain a lot of seeds. One thing that I've mentioned before in some of my other videos is that when you're picking out eggplants, you don't wanna pick the heaviest eggplant because usually the heaviest eggplant in the grocery store has the most seeds. And I find that the seeds sometimes will itch your mouth depending on the type of person and also it might may add a little bit of a bitterness to the dish too. But sometimes it's really a hit or miss and you can't really tell if the eggplant has a lot of seeds in it. So what I like to do is get all of the pieces of eggplant that I cut into a bowl and this is where it helps to have cut them in very thin slices. You're basically gonna keep your water running for a little bit and you're gonna start to massage the pieces really, really well. This is going to allow you to get rid of most of those seeds on the inside. Now don't be alarmed as you're squeezing it if the pieces start to disintegrate or fall apart. That is totally fine because when we cook it, it's going to melt away anyway. But basically you want to keep massaging it and keep draining off that water every couple of times so this way you can get rid of most of the seeds. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a close up as I'm draining it. I don't know if you look into the sink or as the water is streaming down, but there are so many seeds that came out of that eggplant. So I did this about four different times and I think I got most of the seeds out. You're never gonna get all of them out just because there are so many and it'll just be hard to do so. But trust me, if you do this step, you will never have the eggplant itch your mouth or scratch your throat if you are the person that this has happened to before. So I went ahead and I squeezed and massaged those eggplant pieces and drained off the water from them for about four times. Now you might do this less, you might do this more, just depending on how many seeds you can get out. And as you guys can see, the pieces look a little mushier and a little more disintegrated than before. Again, that is totally fine because when you cook it in whatever dish you're adding it to, it will fall apart anyway. So the way that I like to prepare it before going into the freezer is I like to put a little bit of oil into a hot pot and I like to put the eggplant pieces inside. We're not seasoning this at all. We're not adding any other seasonings or spices in there. We just wanna stir this around and steam the eggplant until it's about halfway cooked. The reason why I like to do this before putting it in the freezer is because I find that when you put raw eggplant in the freezer, it tends to get freezer burned very quick and quicker than if you were to cook it here. And what happens is sometimes it changes to a very dark brown color as well. It tends to oxidize. And while that's okay, it doesn't change the taste. It does change the look of the dish. So I prefer to not have the eggplant become oxidized. 
It also helps the eggplant to be steamed before putting it in the freezer because it will also cook, cut down on the cooking time when you go to make whatever dish you want. If you're in a pinch one day of the week and you feel like eating some baigin curry or if you feel like making some fried baigin or eggplant, then this is totally something for you because it will cut your cooking time down by so much. I think it takes about half the time when you put the frozen one that you already steamed into a dish to cook. Basically what I like to do is put it into the hot pot with the oil and I like to stir it around really well. Then I cover it and I let it sit for maybe five to 10 minutes. Every so often I'll go in and stir it. And as you guys can see, once you've let it sit for that couple of minutes, it'll wilt down really well. It's cooked basically halfway. And that's the point where you can take it off of the stove and you're gonna let it cool completely. So my eggplant pieces have cooled completely after I finished cooking them. You want to make sure that they are fully cool and not even warm before putting them in the freezer because if you ever put hot food in the fridge or the freezer, it tends to make the food sour or spoil very quickly. So make sure just take those precautions before you stick it in the freezer. Now I'm just spooning it into a Ziploc bag. Make sure you use a freezer safe Ziploc bag because if you use one that's not freezer safe, it can freezer burn very quickly and then it won't be good at that point. Now what I like to do is just go ahead and compress it really well, get it into a nice shape, and then I can stick it into my freezer. Now one thing I recommend that I did not get to do was date your bag. If you're a person that sticks things in your freezer and you just leave them there for a long time and sometimes you forget if you stuck it in there, it's best to date any bags or items you put into the freezer to know when you bought it or when you prepared it. So this is gonna go into my freezer. It's completely cooled, completely sealed, and this will stay for maybe three months, maybe even more in your freezer, but trust me, with all of the delicious eggplant recipes I have on my channel, it might not last that long. So just get ready for some new eggplant recipes to come on my channel. I hope you enjoyed this quick little preparatory video today. I hope you like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to leave your comments below. I'll see you guys again very soon in my next video.